what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel so today on unity motorsports garage we are going to dive into something that is not on the internet we're going to do some carb testing something that i love to do something that i've done plenty of way back when i first started my channel even though the videos were crude i got some pretty interesting results back in the day so ever since i built mixed up balls two to three years ago um every once in a while i get an email with the same question how come you didn't use a 750 double pumper instead of doing the 750 dominators well the dominators just look cool okay and i wanted to see if i could tune dominators to be streetable and i've done that in fact they work extremely well now they are pretty picky when it comes to uh, deciding which circuit that they're going to operate in um, and i will show you once these carburetors are off why that is because the transfer slot in a dominator is not in the same location as a typical 4150 so getting back to these questions people ask me how come you don't try a 750 double pumper. Well, I decided to get a hold of Gerard at Allstate Carburetors, and he and I were talking, and we decided to come up with a game plan to do just that. So let's take a look and see what we have on the back of the truck. So on my community post a few days back, I actually put a picture of these two boxes and said, guess what's here? Let's take a look, see inside the box and see what we have. I don't normally do unboxing videos, but this is pretty cool stuff. So we do this one handed. So basically what you're looking at here are two 750s that are built on Holly HP main bodies done by the folks at Allstate Carburetor. Here's the gaskets and calibration chart. You can see what jets they come with, what air bleeds, power valve, so on and so forth. What we're gonna do is basically a three-way comparison between these carburetors and the dominators. Now, mind you, this is a 750 double pumper and this is a 750 dominator so we're going to find out if cfm is the same between a dominator and a 4150 something i have never seen or heard anyone talk about the comparison is going to go like this we're going to have a three-way deal i'm going to find out how streetable the new carbs are out of the box with the current state of tune going to put it on the chassis dyno dyno it with the dominators baseline it find out how much power casper's making at the tires with those carburetors we're going to swap these carburetors on at the dyno and then the final test will be how do they accelerate at the drag strip that's knowledge that people you'll never get anywhere else so why are two 750 carburetors so much different when you look at the size of the venturi here you can see it's common 4150 stuff pretty small now this is actually a machine step download booster which is a really good design and then you see the venturis on the 750 dominator I don't know if you can see it in there, but you can see that it uses the booster as kind of a restrictor plate, limiting how much airflow can go through this Venturi. Otherwise, this is a basic 1050 dominator, and one can actually convert this to a 1050 by just simply swapping out the boosters. I think this is going to be a pretty awesome A-B test. Um, the reason why I'm not putting these carburetors on today and it's a part of this video is I'm waiting on new oxygen sensors 
for my wideband O2. So let's look at that. Now, this is my ultimate secret to success, okay? Is actually having a wideband dual channel for the Tunnel Ram Mafia. What this does is this allows me to find out in real time between the driver side bank, passenger side bank, and so yeah, I can set it up as single O2 or dual, but the problem is the oxygen sensors are dead. Uh, they started acting kind of funny a while back. Started getting kind of slow, then started giving me crazy readings. And I guess that's to be expected after they're, you know, nearly five years old. So here's a pretty cool little tech tip. If you have a wide band meter such as the Fast or the Innovate or the AEM, things like that, to buy the replacement sensors for those meters outright is pretty expensive. But there's a cheaper option. You can go to eBay and get oxygen sensors for a Volkswagen. You can actually get the Volkswagen oxygen sensors um, and they work perfectly. In fact, it's a Bosch sensor. Uh, I'll put a picture of it in here so that you'll have the part number and all that good stuff. But I've used those sensors in the past on this. This is the second set of sensors that I have put in it. The first set of sensors I put in the truck or when I've put the meter in the truck, I killed it right away by using race gas. Don't be this guy. You know, leaded fuel, oxygen sensors, no good. You can get away with it for a few times and then it will just kill the sensor and then you have to buy new sensors. But I've got to give that little tech tip credit to Tom down at Precision Dyno uh, because Tom is the one who actually informed me that, hey, the Volkswagen wideband is the same sensor as the Innovate, AEM, and Fast, what they use. So make sure that you look and have the same style in plug as what you have with your sensor and go from there. The oxygen sensors are supposed to be here on March 5th. So that's really cool, but... I'm going to go ahead and get the carburetors put on the truck and then I'm going to show you step by step how I go about setting up carburetors on a ton of rim from scratch right out of the box carburetors my thought process and what I do how I use the wideband and show you tuning the different circuits and something that you may learn along the way because I thought I knew about tuning carburetors that is until I put a wideband O2 in the truck. Then I realized just how much I didn't know. And ever since doing that, I'll never go back to having carburetors without an oxygen sensor. I know that sounds contradictory to a lot of people out there, but hey, I'm an analog guy living in a digital world. And I might as well make the use of technology to make it the best possible situation for the carburetors. So put it in the comments, is the Mighty Dominator gonna come out on top? Or is it gonna be the 4150 750 by Allstate Carburetors? Put it in the comments, let me know which one you think is gonna come out on top with these three comparisons here. And I will catch you later.